What are some fun robot ideas for winter time? In this episode, I will be sharing with you five winter themed robot lessons that you can teach in your classroom. These are lessons that I have taught with my students that they have absolutely loved, and I know that yours will too. All of the lessons that I'm going to be talking about in this episode, I used very specific robots and a variety of robots in my classroom. However, don't be so stuck on the robots that I'm going to be talking about for each of these lessons. You can definitely mix in whatever robots that you have on hand. For example, if I'm talking about the Spiro robot for a specific lesson, you don't necessarily have to use Spiro. So it can definitely work with whatever robots you have. Also, I'm just sharing with you a snapshot of how I taught these lessons. For second through fifth grade, I went through the whole engineering design process throughout the week. So this wasn't a one-day challenge. You could, of course, modify it to be a one-day challenge, but we really went through all the stages of the engineering design process for each of these lessons besides the kindergarten and first one that I will be sharing at the end. The one for kindergarten and first grade was for a STEM station, so it was one of many activities that we did throughout the week. So just keep that in mind when you're hearing about these lessons. They are way more involved than what I'm really talking about, but just wanted to give you an idea for winter theme robotics lessons that you can use well, of course, during the winter time and help spark some creativity with all of these fun different themes. The first robot idea for winter time is Sphero Sleds. Like I said, don't get too caught up in the type of robot that I used. For this lesson, I was inspired by the Iditarod, and I'm not quite sure why I got inspired by it, but I was inspired by the Iditarod, and I'm so glad I picked this topic for this lesson, because where I'm at in Colorado, most kids actually don't know what the Iditarod is. Now, once I started talking more about it, they had a little bit of background based on maybe some movies that they had seen, but overall, most kids had no idea what the Iditarod was. In general, if you can pick very obscure topics, that's going to really help with the engagement. So not only were kids engaged in the topic about the Iditarod, but they were also excited to code and integrate some engineering challenges as well. So a whole lot of things to be engaged in. So basically the Iditarod is a dog sled race, a very famous one that takes place in Alaska in March. That's a basic snapshot for you. Look it up. But the kids were super into it. And of course, if they love animals and dogs like me, like my little dog, Frederick, he could definitely not do a dog sled race. That would not be happening. He doesn't even like going outside when it's sprinkling water outside. Like, But the kids love seeing videos of this. There's a whole lot of great things out there. The Iditarod website is awesome for research. They can research about a musher and learn more about that and name their sled race all of that. So students will research and learn about the Iditarod, and then they will design a sled for their robot to pull through the Iditarod race. So depending on the type of robot, this could definitely vary your materials. When I did this in my class with Spiro, I had red solo cups or similar shaped cups that they could cut and manipulate, plastic straws, paper, and tape. And that was actually it. Those were all the supplies that students had to work with. So they really had to be creative. This actually helped too that the weight of the sled wasn't too heavy so that the robot could pull it while it was being coded. And then students would have to code their robot through the Iditarod race. So I have a racetrack that has all of the checkpoints that are actually listed in the actual race. And so students can learn about that pathway and how treacherous it is and how there are so many different angles to go through. It's really fun too, because depending on their sled design, it really changes of how the robot moves and how it affects the racetrack. This is a really fun challenge. The kids are super engaged and super excited, and they get to learn about an event that they may not have heard about before. The second robot idea for winter time is Sphero Snowflakes. Again, use whatever robot you want. I did this lesson with fourth grade and students will learn about different types of angles, lines, and symmetry. And this is 
really well represented in snowflakes. There's some awesome videos out there when it comes to the math behind snowflakes and how they have all these different things. And it really helps students build on that vocabulary when it comes to lines and angles and even how to measure angles. Depending on the type of robot that you have, you can even code that robot to go in certain angles, which is really helpful as well. Because we know this is a very hard math concept for students to grasp, so why not implement it within your STEM classroom? After students learn about the math behind snowflakes, they will create their own snowflake that will be taped onto the floor. And in my classroom, I have tiled floors. So I actually have pulled out sidewalk chalk and the students will sketch out and measure their snowflake design on the floor. And they were going absolutely nuts that I let them draw on the floor. I'm like, it's just chalk. It's totally fine. So again, there's some engagement, but students would draw their snowflake design on the floor and then they would cover it up using masking tape. And it's so much fun too, because it looks like Buddy the Elf decorated your classroom for Christmas or the holidays. And so you have these fun snowflake designs for the week, and then students can pull them up when they are all finished. You could build your own snowflakes, but it's way more fun to have the kids build the snowflakes and they get so creative with their designs. Now, if you get really strict with the snowflake design where it's not just a free build and you really have students measure using protractors and yardsticks, they can actually have a snowflake that is legit symmetrical and they can have parts of their code where they can actually loop the code because there are identical lines and angles. So this, again, is a great application of their math skills and putting it in a concrete way. So this was so much fun for the kids, and it really differentiates itself based on their snowflake design and what they create. The third robot idea for winter time is winter games robot mapping. This is a lesson that I did with third grade and we talked about the Winter Olympics and all the places that they have been located within a certain amount of time. We used Google Earth to explore all of these places and learn a little bit more about them and just some cool facts about the Winter Olympics in general and students placed them on their map. Likewise, we realized that the most current winter games are all located above the equator, and we talked about the reasoning behind that. So this was a cool integration to actually expose students to Google Earth and noticing those tools and even practicing their mapping skills and where things are located on a world map. From there, students coded their Ozobot, their little tiny robot, to travel to each of the places where the Winter Games were held in order of when they were happened. And when the robot landed on that location on the map, then it had to perform an action. So this also helped too, where they had to code in chronological order. Some places they had to go backwards. So it really helped again, really notice the pattern of where things are located in the world. If you did this with larger robots, you could use the same map template that I used and you could blow it up even bigger. If you even Google ways to print a PDF on multiple pages, you could definitely do this, print the map very ginormous, and then you could laminate it if you wanted to and then use larger robots. So don't feel like limited where you can't use Ozobots. I know at the time of this recording, those are actually hard to get your hands on right now. So you can use a variety of different things as well. So it's just a really cool connection to think about the winter games, what they are and where they are located in the world. The fourth robot idea for winter time is winter animal migration robots. This one was for second grade and we did mapping in a different way. We talked about different animals and the reasons why they might migrate and how there are a bunch of animals that decide to migrate during the winter time. Students were given articles about specific animals that migrate during the winter time that I pre-researched and wrote articles for them and then shared in Seesaw and recorded my voice. So they had all of that information for them. They chose an animal out of that selection that they were most passionate about, and then they had to code their animal with the migration path that it takes during the winter time on a specific map. 
So I had all this created for them. They had the specific maps. They had an idea of the locations of where the animal migrated to, but then they actually had to create the path and where it stopped at different locations. Again, the robot had to perform an action. So this was super engaging for them. And we even made the little Ozobot, the robot, be the animal that was migrating. So I had little pictures that they could tape on the robot. And it was super fun for them to even record the robot in action again in Seesaw. I didn't mention this with the other ones, but I actually have students record a video of their robots in action with Seesaw. You could do it with Flipgrid or whatever you use. But this is a great way for students, and I have in air quotations, take their work home because sometimes it's hard for kids to really talk about what they did in STEM class because we use such obscure things. So I highly recommend taking photos and videos of their work. So then it feels like that they are taking the work home. I say you're taking the work home by taking a picture. It doesn't always have to be a physical object. It was just super fun for this winter animal migration project and all the other projects for them to share the learning with their families. And the final robot idea for winter time is build a snowman robot coding. This was part of a STEM station rotation out of all the different winter themed STEM challenges that I did throughout the week with the younger students. So this was one of many where we didn't go through the full engineering design process and students were given different images of fun snow people characters that had different accessories on them. They had a full image of that character and the cards that they were given had all the different parts that would make that specific snowman. From there, students had to code their robot. I use B-Bots, but again, definitely what up to you what robots you would like to use. But students would code their robot to collect the pieces to build that snowman character in order of how they thought it should be built. So this even included the round ball at the bottom of the snowman. The middle, if there was a middle, would you put the eyes on first before the glasses or would you not? So it really helped them with that sequential order of how things are being built. So it's almost like that reverse engineering where it actually is taken apart for them and they have to think of what order would it be to build that snowman character. So it was super fun for them. They can definitely take turns. They can take the cards off the grid as soon as they collect them. You can even add in more snowman stories if you would like. But this was a really fun and engaging STEM station. It was quick. It was engaging. But there was plenty for the students to interact with. As a recap, here are the five robot ideas for wintertime that you can implement in your STEM classroom. First, we had Sphero Sleds. Next are the Sphero Snowflakes. Third are the Winter Games Mapping, which I used Ozobots. Fourth, the Winter Animal Migration, again with Ozobots. And fifth, Build a Snowman Coding. I hope you enjoyed all of these different fun winter-themed robotic lessons. Of course, mix in the robots that work best for you, what you have on hand, and the age level of your students. If you're interested in grabbing all of these lessons and getting them in full detail, I have them all packaged together nicely in a bundle in my TPT shop, or you can even purchase the lessons individually based on the students and the needs that you have. But that way it will save you some time and then you can see the engagement in your classroom that I saw in mine.